Hi everyone, it's Kirsten. I'm here with another segment for um, Anatomy of a Picture Book Biography. And today I want to talk about one of my absolute favorite topics because this is uh, one of the things I have the most fun with as a writer. And that is structure. So we're going to look at three different picture book biographies today that have used some unusual or innovative structures. And then I'm going to challenge you to think about how you can do something innovative or unusual with your own picture book biography that you're working on. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is um, Annette Bay Pimentel's Girl Running. Sorry, I've got a little, it's a library copy, so there's a little bit of a glare. Uh, but this is the book of Bobby Gibb, who became uh, the first girl to run the Boston Marathon. And here's some something really cool about this book. It's a fairly straightforward um, picture book biography, but um, the illustrator, Micah Archer, has um, provided some illustrations that provide a bit of structure. So there's a running, um, once Bobby starts actually running the marathon, she enters, she's not really allowed to run, she just jumps into the race. And one of the really cool things that um, the illustrator uses, um, if you look over on the bottom of the page here, um, Micah uses as the organizing principle uh, the mile markers. So this spread is where Bobby starts in on the race. Um, and so we have the first two miles covered on this page. And then when we turn the page, um, we see what happens on the course during miles three through 10. Um, and so we see different things that are happening. So this is helping us pace this portion of the story, which is pretty cool. Um, and then uh, the next page, she's going past um, the girls' college, uh, Wellesley, and the girls at Wellesley are, are cheering her on. And again, we have this uh, illustration on the bottom as our reference point. Then on the next page, um, Annette says, 19 miles, 20 miles, up Heartbreak Hill. Bobby feels confident. She is still running strong. But coming downhill, things change. Bobby learns the hard way that you should not race in new shoes. Um, but again, here the illustration corresponds um, with what Annette's talking about in the text. And again, it kind of gives us an idea of the pacing. She's so close to being done. We know this is 26.2 miles, and she's finally having trouble. Um, and then here we see her crossing the finish line. So um, although this isn't a text structure, this is a way that the illustrator has helped structure the book. And I think it's a really cool tie-in and a really cool way to pace this particular story. Um, another one that I've recently read is uh, When Paul Met Artie, the story of Simon and Garfunkel. Sorry, guys. This is by Greg Neary, um, illustrated by Dave Lichtfield. And here's something really cool about this book. Um, this is each spread. Um, it's a straight chronological, a straight chronological uh, biography of these two uh, men. But the cool thing is, each spread is titled with um, a song, a Simon and Garfunkel song that corresponds to where they are on that part of their life journey. Um, so this one actually is the, the first spread, um, the whole thing's kind of told in flashbacks. So the first spread has them together at a concert in 1981, and then we go back to find out um, 30 years earlier how they met. And again, My Little Town is a song title. And so it talks about on each, you know, how each of them grew up and where they grew up. Um, then the only living boy in New York, another song title. All right, so that structures that spread. So that's um, to me, that's a really innovative way to incorporate something unique about the text by using those song titles and and tying them into each section of the character's life. So that was really original. Um, and finally, a book that I'm really excited about that's not out yet is Hannah Holt's Diamond and the Boy. And the really cool thing about this is um, 
there have been some sort of dual biographies or side-by-side -side biographies, so books like Martin and Mahalia come to, line, to mind. Um, something innovative that Hannah's done in her book is she's, um, on each spread, she has um, one page is the biography of her main character, Tracy, and on the other spread is sort of the biography of a life of a diamond and how a diamond comes to be. So, for example, um, one spread, she talks on um, one side about how the diamond is waiting to be discovered, takes a small eternity around the stone. People search, scrape, and fight for it. The earth opens wide like a hungry mouth, a continent torn apart by diamonds. And then on the other spread, Tracy also is waiting for graduation, seems endless, but finally it comes. Tracy travels cross country for a job working in a lab, science puzzles for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. One idea, his best idea, swirls through his thoughts and weaves through his dreams how to make dust into diamonds. So each of her spreads is structured like that, um, with something, a similar point in the story between the, the diamond and between Tracy himself. And um, to me, that's a really innovative way uh, to tell the story. So for you, if you're telling a person's life story, see if there's some sort of innovative way um, that you can structure it using something organic from that person's life, either in the text itself or in the illustrations. And that will help you with the pacing of your story as it unfolds. And it also will provide an additional sales hook when you're going to attempt to sell that manuscript.